What's up everybody, Subaru has revealed the 2024 Forester at the 2023 LA Auto Show. It's the next generation of the Forester with totally new styling inside and out. It's 0.6 inches longer and half an inch wider than the old Forester, all maintaining the same height, wheelbase, and track width. The slight size growth does open up an extra 0.7 cubic feet of cargo space, and all Foresters will get an impressive 8.7 inches of ground clearance. There's some interesting design touches like a rounded front end, front fender vent similar to the ones on the WRX, and a D-pillar line that includes the all-wheel drive badge. Some odd choices are the brownish bronze wheels and trim on the Sport that might be a deal breaker for some, along with the odd fake inlets in the front that look like a bad copy of the ones from the CRV and cutouts in the rear bumper for a dual exhaust, but there's just one and then the other one's just a filler panel. Kind of uh, lazy styling to be totally honest. Uh, compared to you know many of the other good looking compact SUVs out there, I think the new Forester is easily one of the worst looking ones in the group. At least now, maybe it'll grow on me, but uh, I know that's subjective let me know what your thoughts are on the styling in the comments below also for those that use roof racks it's important to note that uh, the sport and touring trims have flush roof rails now and only the base premium and limited will have the traditional raised ones Subaru says this was done because sport and touring buyers didn't use the rails very much and so they wanted to focus on the trims that uh, you know people actually use those inside it gets the same 11.6 inch touchscreen as all the other new Subarus and the base trim continues with the dual 7 inch screen like other base Subarus have continued to get here. Subaru continues to resist the digital gauge cluster trend as well, offering their old-fashioned cluster here with a tiny middle screen instead like they have you know, for many years now. Otherwise, there's nicer materials with some microfiber on the redesigned seats and the door inserts and a dimpled rubbery design on the dash that's pretty interesting. Also notable are the availability of a ventilated seat option now, along with wireless phone charging and a kick to open tailgate, which are all key things, especially the ventilated seats that you know they didn't offer and it was kind of a strange exclusion and so great that they have those now at the show they also announced that a hybrid version will arrive in about a year until then though it's all carryover as far as the powertrain uh, continuing to use the 2.5 liter naturally aspirated boxer 4 that oddly does two less horsepower than the last one for some reason they didn't explain why but it's now down to 180 horsepower and 178 pound feet of torque it still runs through a cvt to subaru's symmetrical all-wheel drive that's now faster to react and it's still also on the Subaru Global platform, although it's now 10% more rigid for this generation, they say, thanks to various improvements. It also gets a version of the steering rack from the DevRx for better feel and response, just like the Crosstrek got. And the EyeSight Safety Tech now has a wider field of view for better performance as well. And there's a new emergency stop assist that will bring the vehicle to a stop, put on the hazard lights, and unlock the doors if the driver quits responding to prompts while using the adaptive cruise control. You have to have that on for it to you know, register that. But anyway, it'll arrive at dealers in the spring of 2024, and there's no pricing for these yet. But based on, again, the simpler gauge cluster and uh, a lot of carryover parts and stuff, I'm assuming it'll be pretty close to the pricing of the current Forester. They also added at the end of the presentation that they will have four new EVs by 2026 and four more by 2028, meaning the whole Subaru lineup could be electric in just about four years or so. It's possible they'll continue to offer gas versions or maybe hybrid versions as well, but there's a chance that this could be the last gas-powered Forester generation we'll get. We'll have to wait and see. But anyway, let me know your thoughts on the 2025 Forester in the comments below. Thank you all very much for watching, and I'll see you on the next one. Take care.